Hey, what's up guys, Steven here and welcome to my unboxing and first look video of the Thrustmaster T150 racing wheel for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3 and for sure the computer. So well, I did a lot, or actually some racing wheel unboxings, mostly Logitech, so I'm pretty familiar with the G27, also the G920, pretty good racing wheels but they can get very expensive. So 400 euros, yeah, that's actually nothing to spend on a racing wheel. But the Thrustmaster T150, it's like some kind of entry-level racing wheel for around 160 euro, which is around 180 dollars, something like that. And this is really kind of cheap, and yeah, it's entry-level for the PlayStation, for instance, Project Cars or Grid or whatever. It does a pretty good job. And today I want to show you the unboxing, so I've got myself on this here for our racing setup for the PlayStation 4. And yeah, the good things about it, it's kind of cheap, it has pretty strong um, force feedback, it's belt driven, and the rotation, it's 1080 degrees actually, from 270 up to 1080 degrees. It's compatible with PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3, so there's a little switch, and you can switch between both consoles, so to ensure that you have the best compatibility. And also it works for the computer, so Windows 10, 8, 7, so it will get detected and it's pretty easy to use. Very straightforward, you just plug it into your console and there you go. So here we have the racing wheel, as you can see the package, and it's the 220, 240 volt version, so make sure you buy the correct one. We'll have some links down below in the description, so make sure you check them out, and you can get it very cheap on Amazon. But yeah, I don't want to bore you with facts, so I would say, let's get directly started, let's open up the package and let's see what we've got here inside. So well, um, here first of all we have the racing wheel and bam, that's really huge. So sorry for the setup here right now and the lighting, but unboxings of so big things, that's really crazy. So first of all, in there there's the racing wheel, we'll just get rid of the, of the damn box and yeah, here we have the pedals and there is no clutch included, so you actually just have a brake pedal and you also have here for instance um, the throttle and yeah, um, you will already see it when you unpack it. The quality is not really the best, so what you get is some plastic paddles and the resistance also doesn't feel really good. But um, yeah, it's some kind of arcade a little bit more, the force feedback is also um, pretty good. We have here for instance user manual, actually nobody needs that, Thrustmaster T150, here you can see it. And yeah, it's so easy to use, so you just have to plug it in and there's one simple switch and yeah. Then here we have the mount for the desk. So. I'm pretty sure that the racing wheel also has some mounts for racing seats, but this is for instance here the desk mount, and yeah, I would say let's um, get rid of all the plastic, so this is everything you can find inside the box. We have the racing wheel, we have the mounts, and we have the pedals, and we have the user manual. So let's just go and let's have a closer look at them. Alright guys, so we have the racing wheel and all the components here on the desk, so let's have a closer look at them. Here you can see the base with the wheel. Now we have pedal shifters, but it's also compatible with um, the stick shifter from other Thrustmaster uh, models, so I don't have any here, so I can't test it, but I'm pretty sure we're getting also the high expensive model, so we can test it very soon. Alright, then um, here you can see the racing wheel. First of all, the first feeling, my first impression when I did put my hands on the wheel, it's an 11 inch wheel, so far as I know, and it has some kind of rubber here on the outside. This has a really strong grip, so you really can't um, slide away with your hands. And so far as, as it seems, it's a pretty okay material and it doesn't rub off. But the long-term tests, um, which you will get in like one or two weeks, I will tell you if it rubs off after some sessions. Okay, then here we can see it comes with a full PlayStation controller layout. We have here the PlayStation button in the middle, we have the D-pad, we have here, um, for instance, square, X, um, circle and triangle. We have the share button for the PlayStation 4 controller, it's fully compatible, options button, R2, L2, and here also PS button in the middle once again. So um, you can see here the Thrustmaster um, logo here with that metal thing, and the whole wheel is made out of plastic, the diameter of the wheel kind of small like on most racing wheels, and also the tube diameter, it's yeah, not too big, so it has a little bit of cheap feeling, but feels quite okay for the price range. Then we have the pedal shifters. Pedal shifters are made out of metal and the quality of them now it's not so premium like on the G920 or G27 for instance, so yeah, it feels okay, but the click feeling when you hit the gears well, feels pretty okay. And um, I also drove the BMW M4 for instance, now it's pretty similar feeling actually. Um, you can see 
the wheel rotates okay, so there is not too much um, force here. It's belt driven, by the way. And yeah, um, it feels pretty strong here if I rotate it, but not too strong. And I want to see how the force feedback is on such a cheap racing wheel, because I mostly had racing wheels over around 400 euro. But so far as I um, did read, the force feedback should be very strong. All right, so um, here we have the base, and yeah, it's completely made out of plastic. What it really misses are um, those threads at the bottom to mount it, for instance, on a professional racing setup. So we just have that clamp mount, which Thrustmaster implements on almost all the racing wheels. And yeah, um, now to mount it, actually, there's one screw, and it looks like a wing screw or something like that here with a ball mount. And yeah, you just have to screw it in here like this, and then you can clamp it to your deck. Now, um, the thickness of the desk can be really big, so if you screw it in here like this, there we go, then, yeah, um, the desk could be like three centimeters big, so that's pretty okay, and will we'll actually fit most of the desks. Yeah, this is how the mount here looks like, and the thread here at the bottom is also very big, so I'm pretty sure it won't wear out, but it really misses all the threads at the bottom to mount it on a professional racing setup. Then, what we can also see here, for instance, are the cords. Now, yeah, I hope you guys can see that right over here. And we have here, for instance, a connector for a stick shifter. So it's compatible with any stick shifters from the Thrustmaster series. Then um, the USB cable and the power cord, you can't remove them. So they're hardwired. We have here the strain relief. Now, it seems pretty good, but the cable length, it's not really long. Now, the cable length of the USB, it's around two meters. Same goes for the power cord. So you probably need to use an extender or have a wall mount, a wall socket and also the PlayStation very near to your setup. Now, if you have, for instance, um, a projector setup, yeah, you definitely need to use extenders, at least in my case. All right, then we have here also the port for the pedals and it looks like, you know, those telephone cables, the old ones actually looks the same. So completely different than the serial cable on the Logitech racing wheel I have right over here. Okay, closer look at the base. Now, we have your switch to switch between PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3. You know, you know um, different layouts, different communication with the console itself, so you definitely need to switch here, but also works on the computer. We have here also the L3 button and R3 button, so basically when you press the thumbstick on your controller in, and another button which I'm not sure what it is doing, so it's the mode button. Basically, probably you can switch between different modes. And we have here um, something which looks like an LED which indicates if um, yeah the racing wheel is on or off. So that's the whole base. So far, um, it looks pretty good and doesn't look too bad at all. Okay, then let's have a look at the pedals, which you can see right over here. Now the pedals, they're completely made out of plastic and they are really, really lightweight. So just check this out, guys. Now, yeah, um, we have brake and throttle and the brake pedal, now it has a very low resistance. So actually a bit too low. Also, resistance doesn't really increase. So no, um, not really like on the G920, but um, the resistance gets really stronger when you press it. But it's okay for a normal setup in your living room. Um, if you don't have... Um, to apply a lot of pressure to the brake paddle, then you're not pushing the paddles away. Now, the grip of them, it's pretty okay. We have a lot of rubber pads on the bottom side, so you can actually place it on um, most of the floors and it won't slide away. For instance, on the G920 or G27, you have some kind of spikes coming out of, of the um, paddle set, so it won't slide away. We just have your rubber pads, but this should be sufficient for most of the people. Now the throttle feels pretty okay, has less resistance than um, the brake pedal, and yeah, plastic pedals all the way. Uh, we have the two screws, probably you can exchange the brake pads or, and the throttle pad here to get different pad, um, pedal pads or something like that. Okay, um, also the cable here, it's, it's hardwired, and here we have the connector, which looks like a telephone cable connector, I'm not really sure how that thing here is called. So this is how the, G, uh, sorry, the T150 looks like from the outside. Looks pretty solid for 150 euro, 160 euro um, racing wheel. And now I would say, let's quickly go to the PlayStation 4 and let's drive our first round and let's see how this performs. And yeah, I will give you some impressions about it. Okay guys, so now here on the PlayStation 4 playing Drive Club. And yeah, um, the racing wheel really acts as a full PlayStation controller, like you can use all the controls here, the D-pad and all the buttons. And we can quickly go here to the settings and check out what we can find here under controls. So there we go, here's the steering wheel. 
As you can see, um, you can go up here to 1080 degrees, so we'll do it here right now. We can also set here the force feedback strength to 100%. Um, we have here the wheel assist, which you can switch on or off. And here, for instance, the wheel vibration. You can also see it here right now. This is, for instance, medium, low is, yeah, very, very low, actually. Medium is quite okay, and high um, also makes uh, really a lot of sounds. Okay, button configuration. So you can use basically all the buttons, like on your um, PlayStation controller. You can have the handbrake on the circle button, whatever you want to. Okay, so I would say let's go back here and let's jump directly into the game and yeah, um, let's play a little bit. So we are driving here at Japan with some kind of BMW car and there we go. So yeah, um, the vibration is actually really quite strong. The pedal shifters, they're working fine. And there we go. So the full 1080 degrees of steering angle, they feel quite good. Now, the steering wheel itself, it's not noisy, it's actually, um, my G27 was very, very noisy, but this one here, you can barely hear it when the force feedback turns on. So, um, the audio record is very near to the racing wheel, so you'll probably hear all the sounds from it. And yeah, um, so my impression here, the, the rubberized um, steering wheel feels very good, you have a lot of grip. Then the force feedback is not too strong, so actually, uh, the Logitech racing wheels I have, they kick more in, so this one here, yeah, it feels not so strong actually. And the vibration is very strong and it's really accurate. So here, um, also, all you have to configure, oh, sorry, um, usually I play with clutch, so this feels a little bit, this feels a little bit strange here. And there we go, I want to win this. Um, yeah, usually I play with clutch and also with a brake pedal with more resistance, so here on on the T150, the brake pedal, there's almost no resistance, so this feels a little bit non-realistic, but it's quite okay for arcade racers, so here for instance, if you don't play so often and don't want to invest in such a professional racing setup. And there we go. Um, yeah, playing here on the projector, so it's really hard to see the limiter. Actually, I think I'm over-reffing the engine, but yeah, let's just go. And you see, you can fully rotate it 1080 degrees. This feels very good. Force feedback also kicks in, feels okay. Um, yeah, belt driven is really nice because this racing wheel is absolutely not noisy. That's also very good. And what's really cool is that it, it has a nice grip and feels totally accurate with the full rotation angle. But the paddles, no, I'm not so happy with the paddles. And I'm not really sure if there's an upgrade from Thrustmaster, but so far as I know, it's compatible with other pedals and also with the stick shifter. But I definitely need to get that because, yeah, playing with with brake and throttle only is not so much fun. But yeah, um, absolutely accurate feeling here with the T150 on the PlayStation 4. So I'm not going to test it on the PlayStation 3. Actually, I don't think the main market for this one here is the PlayStation 3 because most of the people who own the PlayStation 3 will already have a racing wheel. But I have to say, yeah, it's pretty cool that you can also use it on the older generation and that you can use it on the computer. So let's quickly end this race. And there we go. So actually, I didn't tweak anything. This is really, yeah, I also drive really bad. But um, this is really straight out of the box without any tweaks here. Also, you can't adjust too much here in Drive Club. But yeah, just check this out. So. The wheel is really accurate, pretty cool, and there we go, let's finish this race. Yes, baby. So that's the um, T150 racing wheel from Thrustmaster. All I can say, it's a nice racing wheel, has actually okay force feedback, strong vibration, feels a little bit cheap, but the rubberized, um, the rubberized wheel here gives you a lot of grip. The pedals, um, yeah, my first impression is the pedals feel kind of crappy. The resistance of the brake pedal is not very high and yeah also you see it has plastic pads so not so nice also I just missed the professional mount so we just have here um, for instance the desk clamp but you have that on most of Thrustmaster wheels and yeah also here for the paddles but I have to say entry level it's really great you can find link down below in the description if you're interested kind of cheap 150 to 160 euros so if this is your first racing wheel go for it and yeah thanks for watching this review have a nice day guys, don't um, forget to subscribe and see you very soon in the next racing video review.